All right, uh, we're here today in Spice Isle Marine, beautiful Grenada. And uh, we're here to take a look at uh, this awesome boat, Ava. It's a Ed Joy design, 55.6 uh, feet LOA. Um, it's uh, called the uh, Good Hope 56. Uh, that's what they're calling this design. There's uh, at least two other sister ships that go along with this one. So, um, beautiful boat, semi-custom. It was built uh, by Jacob Brothers in Cape Town. Uh, the owners actually did all the finish work inside, which when we get inside, you're gonna see they did an amazing job at. Really beautiful boat. You can see here, we got a swing keel. We'll look more at uh, how that operates when we get up on top. Gorgeous lines, all aluminum hull. Let me see up here. Some really nice work. Big anchor roller set up up there. Great looking boat. We'll take a walk down the other side. We've got a travel lift on our way over here, so we'll see how long this lasts. Here she comes. Always something interesting going on at the boat yard. You can see they did the uh, swing rudder on here as well. Nice setup. We'll see how that operates up top. We got a feathering prop here. Cool setup. Just really quick while I'm on my way up the ladder here, I just noticed the uh, set up here for the self-steering. All set up there. Nice set up there. Cool looking arch right up above us. We'll take a look at that when we get up here. Just wanted to take a quick look at this uh, custom arch that's here. We've got two solar panels up there. Uh, also have a radar dome up there. Little GPS antennas and such. Uh, it's also set up with davits, you can see there. Uh, just a small davit system. You can pull up an inflatable or actually even the hard dinghy uh, that goes with it. Nice setup. You can see that's all integrated. Also uh, taking a look here at the push pit. Nice aluminum, uh, hard safety lines there just here for the cockpit area. A little bit higher than normal. Uh, just a little extra safety there. Dual helm setup we can see. All, uh, all the hardware on here has all been Teft gelled, so uh, all set up to prevent corrosion. You can see we've got uh, some running backs there set up on, uh, on either side. Those are really just for uh, heavy winds if you're running the staysail. Uh, on there or storm sail, uh, you might need those. They say the rig is actually set up to be pretty stable without those. And then just up above the cockpit here, we can see we've got the kind of custom bimini. The bimini has been taken down just for storage here since we're in the yard, but uh, we've got four more solar panels right up there. So nice setup there. Plenty of solar to keep everything running. Looking forward here to the cabin top. You can see we've got uh, winches ran just here. Everything's ran really cleanly uh, just underneath the, the uh, cabin top there. It goes right along the sides of the deck salon area. Really nicely done. And then just up above here, we can see we've got a nice traveler up there. Really cool and tall traveler setup, roller bearings, everything. And that's all ran just to a, to a uh, line controller right here. So uh, just on the cabin top. Lifelines uh, were done higher. Uh, the boat was built uh, by the owners who cruised uh, with three kids of their own. And then they actually did the last uh, section of their trip with another couple and two more kids. So uh, definitely safety was on their minds, making sure the boat was ready and uh, safe for kids on board. Just as we're walking forward here, we've got our uh, fillers here. Uh, for water tanks on this side and a waste tank there. 
Uh, the water tanks, there's five, two 500 liter tanks on each side. Just looking uh, forward, here's the ladder. Uh, this is a, the, the device that locks the, the keel in the down position. So we can just kind of see how that's ran there. Now take a little peek in there. It's actually locked in its up position right now. You can see right there. Everything ran really clean. All the running rigging looks great. Nice Antol hardware, uh, Antol track on the mast. Set up with a haystack boom there. Uh, you can see the, uh, the stack pack's actually off right now, as well as all the sails, all stored inside to keep them uh, safe and out of the sun. Just looking at the, uh, at the deck salon area there, uh, nice tapered glass, uh, double laminated. It's uh, blocking, uh, blocks about 70% of the UV. Uh, so actually really nice, strong tapered, uh, tempered glass setup. A little dirty right now since she's sitting here in the yard, but uh, she's gonna clean up nice. Then we can see here forward, we've got a hard dinghy, uh, actually a sailing dinghy. The mast for that is actually inside. You can see it's got a little slot there for the dagger board and uh, pintles on the back for the rudder. Cool little way to get around. And she's sitting on, uh, she's sitting on a set of uh, a cradle there. And uh, that cradle is designed to actually hold her either upside, right side up or upside down, either way. Nice secure setup there. Looking forward up to our uh, double anchor rollers. Big Maxwell windlass there. Really nice, the tow rail. I love the, all the setup on this boat. It's just super heavy duty. Aluminum bow pulpit here, uh, set up uh, there, really secure. If you have to come up and work up front, it'd be great to have that there to keep, uh, keep you on board. Here's the uh, baby stay, removable. Uh, you can take that back and store it if you need to. And this is a kind of a cool feature we should get a good look at. Check out the uh, steps going up the mast. And if we follow that up, those steps take you all the way right up to the crow's nest. Really cool. Uh, if you're gonna be in the South Pacific, uh, looking, for, looking for reefs, looking for shoals, uh, great place to, to have for that. Just walking back towards the cockpit here again. There's a uh, Twin heavy, uh, or I'm sorry, high flow fuel fillers here uh, set up. Really nice, uh, be able to take fuel off the big docks, uh, off, the, off the fuel dock, not have to worry about uh, low flow tanks. Really like this, uh, the purchase that they've got here on the uh, main halyard. Uh, that's a really nice setup. Not going to twist and uh, snap that uh, shackle for sure. Aluminum stanchions here, all set up really nicely. Uh, these dorades are set up well. Uh, those vent into the uh, into the cabin down below. Also inside of the uh, the ceiling panels to kind of keep airflow moving there. We can also see right up here, we've got a really nice setup for the uh, boom crutch there, kind of integrated into the, into the frame for the bimini. One thing we just want to take a little bit closer look at here is the swing keel setup. Uh, with that keel up, the boat is, uh, draws about one meter. With the keel down, she draws eight feet. So pretty good. Uh, amount of draft. She's going to have great upwind performance with that keel down, but you're going to be able to access some really shallow, cool spots uh, with the keel up. 4.5 tons of lead in the keel. Uh, you can see the shackles there locking it in the up position. There's a cable that raises and lowers uh, the keel. It's controlled by an uh, electric winch, uh, which is down below. We'll see that when we go inside. This ladder system over here uh, on the back side, that locks the keel in the down position. There is a shear pin, uh, I think you can see it there at the top, that's gonna lock it down uh, when, it, when it goes all the way down. It's uh, there in case of a hard impact, it will shear through that pin 
uh, rather than ripping the rudder, or I'm sorry, ripping the keel off. So that's a nice setup. Uh, the rudder's set up pretty similar in the back. We'll go back and take a look at that also. We're gonna go inside and take a look around, check the boat out. One really cool feature before we go actually go all the way in is, uh, is actually how this, how this companionway works. Let me see if we can set the camera down. Get a, little, get a little of that on film. So if we check it out, this raises, it's on counterweights. It'll raise up to, eh, where does it want to go? I think ideally it'll come up to about there, just on the counterweights. You could close this and have it vented, uh, but then it'll also come all the way up, lock in the up position, and then our slider comes back and actually locks so when this is locked it's solid looking at how this opens up it's going to drop down to about there and then on counterweights we're actually going to push it down the rest of the way let's go ahead and step inside take a look at what we got woodwork in here is all really gorgeous nice joinery all throughout really nice visibility all around here in the pilot house. Nice little uh, inside nav station area there. It's a good place to stand watch, especially at night or when it's crummy outside. You can see we got our uh, engine controls right there. Electrical panel uh, with our shutoffs. Uh, just there, all nice, easy access. Uh, master cabin is there aft. We'll check that out after we go down forward. Going back to the wiring here, uh, electrical system for just a second. The boat's all wired 24 volt. Uh, it does have some 12 volt uh, for, for the instruments and things that require that. Um, but mostly all wired 24. It's uh, 220 volt. Uh, inverter plugs um, throughout the boat. We'll come over here and take a look just inside uh, around to this side we've got the galley. Little uh, breakfast nook kind of section right there. Engine access just under the stairs and a nice uh, heater there. That heater's hooked up with uh, hydronic connections uh, that go back to the aft cabin where there's a, a little radiator section there could be expanded throughout the boat as well looking at that heater again uh, that heater is a reflex diesel heater they're made or they're a danish heater hydronic with radiator in the aft cabin it could be expanded to the other cabins no problem beautiful uh, tile back uh, not really a backsplash i guess a little heat shield right behind that as well we'll take a look inside that engine compartment here in just a bit First, just looking at the galley, tons of storage. Um, one cool feature we've got right here is the day tank. Uh, it's got a 135 liter day tank there, and that's just the sight tube uh, for the day tank. Great feature. Checking out the double sink. Uh, we've got the hand pump there, uh, pressure water. It's got filtered water, also a salt water tap there. Refrigeration, we've got a top loading uh, fridge freezer here, which is actually a, uh, I believe it's a 12 volt um, commercial fridge freezer here. So easy to replace if you needed to. Uh, refrigeration goes out, you just pop a new one in there. Really like the, the tile black backsplash there on the, on the stove there. Looking at the stove here, we've got a Dickinson uh, stove slash oven and uh, it's on gimbals so you can choose to have it either gimbaled or not gimbaled uh, three burners as you can see there and then there's a stainless steel uh, splash guard right down if you can see there behind uh, behind the stove there so any uh, you know any splatters or anything they're not going to go back and uh, cause stains or whatever with the wood there's actually a stainless steel liner in there we're just taking a quick look in the uh, engine access room there uh, lighting is just not going to work in there with the video, but uh, what we've got in there is a John Deere 
130 horsepower four cylinder turbo diesel engine. Uh, it's got a 24 volt starter and there's only 258 engine hours on that. There's also a, a Yanmar uh, generator in there, um, which we can see back there. It's actually just to the right. Uh, that's a Yanmar 2GM20. It's 140 amp, 24 volt, um, about a thousand hours on the gen set. So both the engine and the gen set, super low hours. Really nice engine access. I wish I had better lighting. I'd love to show you guys in there. Uh, nice open space in there. Really easy to get in there compared to most boats I've been on anyway. Um, really cool. There's actually five engine access points. The uh, floor lifts up from above. You can get there from the aft cabin uh, to access the back side of things. Uh, and then this open here, really nice. Uh, stairs come up on both sides. Uh, both here and going back the ones leading back into the aft cabin. So there's great access into that space One other cool feature I wanted to mention about the uh, the day tank system is that we've got uh, fuel pickups are tiered so uh, the top Pickup is going to be for the heater least critical uh, piece of equipment That'll cut out first uh, followed by the generator and the bottom pickup is actually for the for the main engine so we've got really nice uh, kind of a redundancy safety system there to help uh, manage fuel, uh, a little fuel management if needed. There's also a sediment cup with a drain uh, so you can drain out any dirt and water. And the fuel manifold allows you which tank to draw from uh, to fill that day tank. So you can choose whether you're picking from uh, port or starboard, uh, which tank you're, you're drawing from. There's also a fuel polishing system on board. Uh, with Raycor, uh, with also has an Algae X uh, system attached to that. So really nice way to set that up. You can also balance the tank. So if you're drawn down uh, the port side too much, you can uh, switch that up uh, to the starboard. Just wanted to give you the breakdown on this uh, faucet system that we've got going on here. Uh, there's freshwater foot pump. Uh, and that's actually down below the edge of the sink down here. You can see that. Uh, that's only if the electric pump fails for some reason. So you've got that as a, as a backup. Then there's a saltwater hand pump. You see that one there on the far right. Uh, these things are drawn from filtered water taps. So it uses household filters. Easy to, easy to replace. Uh, hardware stores even here in Grenada carry that stuff. So uh, it's a triple filter. There's a sediment, fine filtration, and finally uh, a carbon filter on there. So uh, drinking water right out of the tap is going to be going to be great. Again, we're suffering a little bit from lighting here. I wish I had a little bit better light, but uh, we're just here in the galley still, and I opened up the cupboard here. This is a little, uh, little tea corner. It holds two hot water dispensers, so uh, you can get the hot water going, boil that, and you no need to boil water when you're on watch. Uh, you've got enough hot water in there to make tea or coffee, whatever you need. We can also kind of see back in here into the, the hull liner. The hull is actually insulated with sheets of 32 millimeter expanded polyethylene, uh, there's two layers of that. So the entire hull has 64 millimeters of, uh, of insulation. So really nice. Going to keep the boat nice and toasty, either warm or keep it cooler down here in the Caribbean where the sunshine's beating on all the time. Just going forward uh, from the galley, uh, kind of crew quarters set up up here. You can see uh, we've got bunks. Right now we've got some sail storage going on up here. Boat's uh, in the yard, so uh, that's kind of what we get. Uh, but really nice area up here to... Uh, Two bunks here on port side and another two over here on starboard. More sails, got some cushions there that make seats. Uh, looking forward, we've got uh, the head up here, but it's also is the uh, workshop. You can see we've got a workshop bench with a vise and all that. Uh, that table that we see right there, that's the uh, cockpit table. So that bolts down up front. You might have noticed the uh, plates for that when we were up there. You got tons of storage up here for tools, lines, whatever you need. And then also we can see just around the corner here, we've actually got a shower and, uh, and a little tub right here as well. So pretty cool uh, little use of space up here. Nice forward head. So we notice uh, from standing here on this side, we've got the galley and all that area. This side, we've got another room going forward. And in the middle, there's the trunk. That's actually our keel trunk. So uh, going forward, we can see uh, this really nice wood uh, cover that's going here. 
And what that's covering is actually the winch cable. So hiding in that compartment in that little cutout area right there that we see is a uh, Ramsey truck winch is what it is. So it's got a remote control to allow uh, control that keel. The winch is gonna raise and lower the keel. Really nice clean installation. So heading back aft on the other side from the galley, uh, I mentioned uh, the owners had three kids. Uh, this was the classroom. They were homeschooling the kids as they were cruising. So this is the area they used for that. This could be converted into a, into a different cabin. Uh, you could make a nice bunk area in here um, or dining table, uh, depending if you're in cold latitudes and don't want to be outside. And we can see just here stored on the floor in here is our mainsail. Really nice. See the roller, ba roller bearing cars uh, on there. Nice setup. I believe those are Antal cars. That's really a great setup there. And that sail's in great condition. Uh, the sail cloth is still crunchy, still going to have great sail shape. Um, so there it is. Heading forward, we can see there's more storage in here. All these little uh, sliders provide more storage. There's a little pop up table there. Uh, you can see it's got great lighting in here. Going to have good ventilation. We got nice hatches. All right, there it is. Takes us right back to the steps going back up into the into the uh, deck salon area. Sounds like our neighbors are still working on getting set up for the trailer. Let's go take a look back here at the uh, the aft cabin. All right, looking at the aft cabin, we've got a nice little desk set up area here. Great little space, and then just under, basically underneath the the cockpit. There's a full-size bed there with tons of storage. Kind of set in here, see if we can get a spot. There is, uh, over on the other side, you can see the radiator setup that we mentioned for the hydronic heating. So we're putting a little heat aft here as well. More storage and uh, access there. We can see there's storage compartments just there on the other side of the bed. Very nice. And then access here, these stairs will also lift out and allow us access to the uh, engine area. Closet space right here, all very well organized. Looking over on port side, we've got another sealed compartment there, uh, vented to the outside. First, uh, that's our actual propane locker there. Lots of great storage here in the lazarettes or cockpit lockers. Another one over on this side. Oh, there she goes. So we're gonna take another look here at the steering compartment area. This is the mechanism that actually raises and lowers uh, the swing rudder. Uh, it also has uh, facilities there for an emergency tiller, so you can uh, maneuver that if you need to. And there is also on this uh, another shear pin, so that rudder will kick up if it hits something hard. Uh, there's a pin involved there. And you can see where from these storage compartments on the outside, on this side we've got life jackets and uh, some stuff there. And on the other side, we've got lines and it looks like a, a fuel can canister in there. Uh, but when we look through from the steering compartment side, we can see they've actually separated that out with nets. So all that extra uh, line there for the, for the anchor road, I believe that's an emergency spare anchor, uh, that can't get involved in the steering, kind of keeping that out of the way. So nice way to isolate that. And we've got the same thing on the other side netting there, keeping all the stuff stored in the lockers out of that area. However, if you needed to get in there and service the steering, you could clear all that storage out, uh, remove the nets, and you'd have really nice uh, access to the steering. All right, I just wanted to wrap our video up with a nice pano here of the, uh, of the deck salon area. Really a beautiful boat, designed to go anywhere, really well thought out and, and gorgeously finished. Uh, the joinery, again, like I said, is, is just beautiful on this boat. Really uh, nicely done. And uh, yeah, she's ready to go. So need to find some new owners.
give me a call if you have any questions about the boat. Uh, email me. Uh, we'll have a link to the listing in the comments below. So check it out. Let me know if you have any questions.